Hello, everyone. Welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. In this particular segment, we're going to be looking at how to prepare for the KEEM exam, which is Kerala Engineering Architecture Medical Exam. Now, this is a very important exam if you want to enter into uh, a job. So, therefore, uh, it is quite difficult for some, and therefore, we're here to fast track your way into this exam. So, today, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at some questions asked in previous episodes, previous editions of this exam, and then try to solve them for you so that you can get a feel of how the exam is going to look like. So, for this particular uh, set of videos, we're going to be looking at each subject and each chapter in detail. So, to start things off, we're going to be looking at chemistry and the first, you know, concept uh, which deals with basic concepts of chemistry as well as atomic structure. So, let's kick things off with a beautiful question. Now, let's look at this question. Avogadro's hypothesis states that the ideal gas consists of a large number of small particles called molecules. Under the same conditions of temperature and pressure, equal volumes of gases contain same, same number of molecules. Volume of a definite quantity of gas at constant pressure is directly proportional to absolute temperature. The given mass of gas at constant pressure is directly proportional to absolute temperature. For a definite mass of gas at constant temperature, the volume is inversely proportional to its pressure. <clears throat> So, let's look at each of these statements. But before that, we need to understand what Avogadro's hypothesis talks about. It talks about having a standard for the number of molecules. Now, remember in the mole concept, we said that one mole equals 6.02 into 10 raised to 23 molecules. This particular number is called Avogadro's number because it was he who found out that one mole of any substance contains this much amount of its particles, its constituents. So, <clears throat> so if we look at anything regarding Avogadro's hypothesis, it has to be based on the number of molecules. Now, let's look at each of the options. The ideal gas consists of a large number of small particles called molecules. Again, this is a standard statement. It's not a hypothesis. A is incorrect. If we look at option E, it says, for a definite mass of gas at constant temperature, volume is inversely proportional to its pressure. This is what we call Boyle's law. And it is one of the several gas laws that you'll study in a future chapter called States of Matter. Moving on, option D, a given mass of gas at constant pressure is directly proportional to absolute temperature. Now, this relation would be found in the ideal gas law, which says PV equals NRT. So, option D is incorrect. If we look at option C, it says volume of a definite amount of gas by constant pressure is directly proportional to absolute temperature. This is Charles' law, so therefore option C is incorrect. The only correct option among the five is option B, which says under the same conditions of temperature and pressure, equal volumes of gases contain the same number of molecules. So therefore, Option B is the right option. Now, let's see what this question has to offer. The observation that the ground state of nitrogen atom has three unpaired electrons in its electronic configuration and not otherwise is associated with Pauli's exclusion principle, Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity, 
Heisenberg's uncertainty relation, Ritz combination principle, valence bond method. So what does the observation say? It says that if we have the electronic configuration of nitrogen in its graphical form, now if you look at nitrogen, it has seven electrons. So that means you can classify it as 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So again, this has to do with <clears throat> electronic configuration. So if we were to represent this graphically, the first shell would have one subshell with two electrons. The second shell would have two subshells, one with a single orbital and the other with three orbitals. The sub the orbital the subshell with three orbitals, the P subshell, has three electrons and they are unpaired. So this is the observation that we have. Now this has to now we represent it in this way because of a certain law. We have to find out what that law is. So let's look at each of the options. Option E, valence bond method. The valence bond method is associated with using classical force fields to describe chemical reactivity. So option E is incorrect. It does not explain the observation. Option D is Ritz combination principle. The Ritz combination principle explores the relationship of spectral lines. Again, has very little to do with the observation here. Option C is Heisenberg's uncertainty relation. Now what does that have to say? It says that the position and velocity of an object cannot be exactly measured at the same time. So what it means is if you try to measure the position exactly, the velocity gets affected. If you try to measure the velocity, the position gets affected. So again, it has very little to do with the observation here. So therefore, option C again is incorrect. What about option A, Pauli's exclusion principle? Well, Pauli's exclusion principle says no two electrons in the same atom has the same quantum number. So what it says is that the quantum numbers of each electron in an atom would be different. Again, doesn't explain the observation. Option A is incorrect. The only option that's left here is option B, which has to be the correct one. Hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity. But if you were to you know, research what is Hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity. It says that the electrons distributed in orbitals would be in such a way that the maximum number of unpaired electrons are present with parallel spins. So if you look at the configuration here, in the 2p orbital, we have three electrons. So therefore, it's the best way to put them is to put them in... Um, it's to put them in orbitals such as such that they are unpaired and also they have one direction of spin. Now, if it was 2p4, we would have one of these as paired because we don't have another orbital to put it into. So that's how Hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity explains the observation here. Option B is the correct option. Now, let's look at this question. The one electron species, the one electron species, 
having an ionization energy of 54.4 electron volts is hydrogen, helium plus, B4 plus, lithium 2 plus, beryllium 3 plus. All of these are one electron species, which means that they have a positive nucleus orbited by a negative electron. <clears throat> so, how do we calculate the ionization energy? The ionization energy is, for the first electron to go out would be minus the energy of the first orbit. Now, why first orbit? Because we only have one electron here. So, that can be ca uh, calculated as negative of minus 13.6 into z square electron volts. For hydrogen, its atomic number, or z, is 1. So, its ionization energy would be minus 13.6 times 1, and that is in, in the bracket with a minus outside. So its ionization energy would be 13.6 electron volts. For beryllium, its atomic number is 4. So therefore, its ionization energy, if you were to calculate it, it would be 13.6 times 4 square, which would be 16. Now that, when you calculate it, you'll get a value of 217.6, which is incorrect. If you look at lithium, its atomic number is 3, so its ionization energy would be minus 13.6 times 9, which is 3 squared. So <coughs> you would get a value of 122. Point four. So option D is incorrect. If you look at boron, boron has 5. Boron's atomic number is 5. So its ionization energy would be minus 13.6 times 25, which would give us a colossal value of 340 electron volts. So therefore, the correct option here would be option B, helium plus. Helium has atomic number 2. So if we were to check our calculations, it would be minus 13.6 times 2 square, which would be minus 13.6 times 4. So, all right, so 13.6 times 4, so you get 6 4 is 24, 3 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14, 1 4 is 4, 4 plus 1 gives you 5. So therefore, the correct answer is 54.4 electron volts. So we do know that the so we have found out that the ionization energy of helium plus is 54.4 electron volts. So therefore, option B, helium plus, would be the correct answer. Now let's look at the final question for this episode. The correct set of quantum numbers. N, L, and M respectively for the unpaired electron of chlorine atom is 210, 211, 311, 321, 32 minus 1. So, we need to find out the quantum numbers, the first three quantum numbers for the unpaired electron of chlorine atom. So, how do we solve this question? Well, it's a good idea to write down the electronic configuration. So chlorine has 17 electrons, so we will write them in the electronic configuration. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5, 2, 4, 6, plus 6 gives you 12, plus 5 gives you 17. Now, if we were to represent 3p5, graphically we'll use Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity so first the first three electrons are put in parallel spin then we will pair up some of the electrons so that's number four and this is number five so it is the electronic configuration that, so it's the quantum number of this electron 
that we need to find because it's the only one that's unpaired. So we al we already know that it ha it will have a positive spin or plus half, so we don't need to find the spin quantum number. But we do need to find the other quantum numbers. So for that, let's look at the the orbital, the subshell that it's in, which is 3p. Now 3 means that it's in the third shell, so therefore its principal quantum number would be 3. Since it's in the p subshell and p has an azimuthal quantum number of 1, the value of L would be equal to 1. So therefore the possible values of M would range from minus 1 to 1. So let's look at the following options. Now N is equal to 3, so therefore that eliminates option A and B because it has the principal quantum number as 2. Now let's look at the azimuthal quantum number, L equals 1. Now using that we can eliminate options D and E because they say that 2 is the azimuthal quantum number. Because If it was 2 then the orbital would be D and not P, which is incorrect. So therefore the correct option here is option C, 3, 1, 1. 3 is the principal quantum number, 1 is the azimuthal quantum number, both are verified and the orbital quantum number given is 1, which again is possible because m has a range of mi from minus 1 to 1. So you, have, you can have minus 1 or 0 or 1. So putting 1 as the orbital quantum number is correct. So therefore option C would be the correct option for this question. Now that concludes this episode of Cream Crash Course. Now we at Agile Rankmate focus on providing carefully curated content. So we would like you to use our content for your various purposes. After all, our aim is to provide top quality content for education. So as you leave this video, please don't forget to show your support by subscribing to our channel. You can also like the video if you've enjoyed it and you can share it to all of your peers if you find it useful. Also, you can comment on the various aspects of the video. What did you like? What could be improved? What can be done to, you know, spread it more? So you can always give your feedback in the comments section down below. Again, if you are subscribing and you want to get notifications about our videos, then please hit the bell icon. Again, that's present below the video. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe, ta-ta for now.